Hey everyone, this is your best buddy Nonagon again, coming with a video on file upload and the security around that. Uh, a lot of programmers and developers that I've run into do not understand the full uh, ramifications of what happens when you upload a file and if you're not careful, all the terrible things that could happen with it. So I also need to put a disclaimer in here that some stuff that I'm going to show you in here could be deemed bad if the wrong individual uses it, so I'm not endorsing you to go and do bad things to other people's servers. That would be illegal, and you should be arrested. So, we're not going to do that. I'm telling you how to prevent it, and the kinds of things that could happen should you not prevent it properly. But, very quick tutorial on how to do a file upload in FatFree. So, one thing that you need to do is define your uploads directory. Uh, you technically don't have to do this, but you can. Uh, otherwise, it will just default to the current directory that you're in. So, you define this, and then, I know this looks a little funny, but it works. When a, whenever you do these closing braces, and then just output stuff, and then do the you know, opening PHP tag again, uh, it, this is just an echo statement, so it just happens to be HTML and just it happens to do this so I'm just echoing this out as it is so it's just a really simple upload form when you have an upload form you do method post and encoding type multi-part form data and it's just a really simple file and then in fat free it honestly is a super slick way to do it you just get the web instance and you go receive and it uploads it and it handles all the upload for you it's honestly it's super chill Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and get my web server started. I've done this before, so this uh, T public and all this stuff. So here we go. Got it all set up. And here we are. We're at upload, making sure we're good. There we go. We upload it, and poof, it is uploaded. So we'll come back here. You can see uploads, test screenshot. Awesome. My test screenshot works, it uploaded, it's super simple, it can't get more easy than this. So that's how you do a file upload, it's pretty chill. If you wanted to change the directory, you could technically do something like uploads equals different directory. And then it would receive it and do all the wonderful magic and it would just do its thing. We don't need to do that here. So. Well now, what could possibly go wrong? Well, so right here it says, please only upload J uh, JPEG, GIF, or ping files. Well, what if we said, pretty please? What if we asked really nicely? Uh, that's not gonna stop anyone from doing bad things. So, um, what bad things can we do? Well, the worst thing that could possibly happen is, uh, I mean, obviously, like, they upload a virus, and uh, compromise your server, do bad things with it, turning it into a uh, mining facility so that they can get more Bitcoin. They could do that. I've had that happen before. Um, that's not terrible, though. They could just corrupt your entire file system and make the thing go away, but if you have a backup, it's not terrible. Um, so any file that comes through here, you know, first screen for a virus. There are different online services you can use an API for to send a file and it will give you a thumbs up if the file is good. You could do clam AV locally installed if you want. There's other things that you could do to scan a virus file before you actually or scan a file for a virus before you actually do something with it. But first thing that you do, scan the thing for a virus. That's pretty easy. Um, second thing that you could do is validate the extension. So <clears throat> what happens is you upload a file that's .png, validate that it really is a ping file. There are different ways that you could do this. I won't go over all of them to keep this video a little more brief, but for instance, if you're validating that you have images coming through, what you would do is there's a lot of functions that are in there in PHP for like create image from file blah and it could like validate that it's actually a JPEG file because it can open it and do things with it or a ping file or a GIF file. There's tons of, let me see if I can pull one out here, image, get clip, there are tons of these image files that are in there. So just 
those are some low-hanging fruit that you could do to verify the, that it's really that. There is also, not here, uh, this guy right here is really, really helpful. Um, it's not exactly what I've done in the past. I've had to do it manually, but if we come here to the GitHub page, you can see that it just looks for like file signatures and all that, but this file signatures is kind of interesting. I've looked at it before. So one way to verify that the file type that you're expecting is really what it should be is every file at the very beginning of it has a certain number of, of bytes that it should be expecting. So what this guy in here is doing is he scans the first few bytes and he knows based off of that that it's a 7-zip. Or if it's an ICO file, it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Those are the first few bytes. JPEGs have the same thing. GIFs have the same thing. Pings have the same thing. Everything has its own few, like, little signature at the very beginning. So what you do is you just validate that the signature at the beginning matches the extension that just came through. And you can use this handy little library to do it. You can build your own. There are these, it's called Magic Bytes, is what you can Google for it. Uh, so there's that option as well to really validate that the extension matches. Um, additionally, you should only whitelist certain extensions that could happen. So you need to whitelist what extensions you're allowing so that you don't allow other random extensions, because right now I could do something really terrible. Um, I guess second thing is validate the extension and whitelist allowed extension types. So when I was talking earlier about like what would be a terrible file to get, like you could get a virus through a ping if you're allowing ping files or a GIF or whatever. Um, you got a first screen for the virus, and then you need to validate that it's really a ping. You know, if it says you can only upload ping files, even though you say pretty please, they could upload a .php file if they know that your server is a PHP server. Um, and if they successfully do that, it's a terrible thing. Um, so what you, so it's called a reverse shell. I have an example right here that I'll show you guys. A reverse shell is basically, if I uploaded a file, I could then execute remote commands on the server. And you might think, oh, a remote shell, that might be a little tricky to put together. Well, let me show you what a reverse shell looks like. It's really hard and really difficult, ready? pass through, post command, that's it. That is all that it takes in order to like pass through a script that is really, really damaging and can really do some horrible things. So let me show you what it does, ready? Come down here, I'm gonna upload, reverse shell. There we go, and upload. Come over here and I can see now that I have reverse shell.php in my uploads folder. So I have Postman opened up here. So it's just uploads, reverse shell. I mean, nothing crazy, but let's start executing some commands. What PHP version do you have? Let's find out. Oh, look, PHP 743. Well, that's fun. Well, what else can we find out here? What is in the current directory? Send. Reverse shell. Okay, so now let's go. Well, what's in here? Well, that's fun. Okay, well, what's in what's in here? Oh, a config folder. Well, let's, let's config. That one should be fun. Ooh, there's a config.php. Well, why don't I just change this to cat config.php? Hey, looky there! My super secret password is now exposed. Very secret password. I know what database to use. I know the username and password. That's really fun. Well, now let's see. I could probably do something like, let's see, it says test user, password equals test pass. It's the F3 CMS database. Uh, let's see, show tables. Let's see here. Oh, look, here's all the tables that are in there. What could I do? Show, let's see, uh, select from users. Don't know why that one didn't work. Maybe there's nothing in there. 
Uh, let's see, was it config? Or was it settings? I can't remember. What did I just. So now I can just start experimenting and show tables again. Let's see, so there wasn't anything in there. Users, users, config data. Was there something in config data? From config data. Hey, there's some stuff in here. You know, it gives me the columns, and you know, you, I mean, you could see how bad this could be just because I installed a very, very simple reverse shell. Nothing really crazy. Um, there are ones that are a lot more crazy, so let's go investigate those. So if I come back over here, uh, let's in, let's do this guy right here. Come on, there we go. And upload that. So now I don't even need to do this. I'll just localhost uploads. Hmm. He's coming for page.php. And hmm. Mm -hmm. So, this is a script that someone built that is like the ultimate reverse shell. Like, I have full access to anything that I want. So, here we are. Hey, look, there's my config. Now I can view it. And this is all UI friendly and everything. Here's how you initiate database connections. Um, you can, obviously, there's remote shell. There's info about the server. I can execute any code that I want. I can see what running processes there are. All sorts of stuff. I could explode the world. <laughs> I could do so much damage with this little guy right here just because I accidentally uploaded a script. Um, one other thing that I, I don't think I'll show you in here, but I'll just kind of explain really quick, is um, it is possible for and I kind of did this in the router file. You, I did this because sometimes on some web servers, files are misconfigured so that everything is ran through PHP. Uh, I've seen sites where all JavaScript files are ran through PHP, all CSS files are ran through PHP, all images are processed through PHP before they're actually done. So the problem with that then becomes, okay, well, if the web server is processing everything as a PHP file, I technically can change my file. So, you know, I had reverse shell right here, .php. I very easily could change that to reverse shell .png, and, uh, you know, it will pass the whitelist, you know, because we have to whitelist our extension types right here, right? So it now it's like, oh, it's a ping file, awesome. Well, you didn't actually validate that it was really a ping file, and because it wasn't really a ping file, it just got uploaded and passed your whitelist, because it's cool, right? Um, and then, because of misconfigured servers, I can then do the exact same thing here. It's just instead of .php, it'd be .png. So that does happen. It can happen. And so you need to validate not only that, like, you know, you're only allowing certain extension types, but then you must validate that that really is that extension type with either magic bytes or doing those image commands like I was talking about. So if you found this video helpful, of course, subscribe. Uh, do the cliche thing. I really do like subscribers and I do enjoy helping people. So please subscribe and uh, I'll chat with you guys later.